There are 12 months in a year. Aaron and I don't see any given year as being divided into 12 months, however. We tend to split it up into significant hunting and fishing seasons. For us, the month of May means the start of the game bird season. As well as a week long trip chasing tar with bow and arrow amongst the scrub and bluffs of South Westland. As winter kicks in, things tend to slow down a tad but usually fit in a few small trips poking about side creeks on the west coast looking for chamois. First sign of spring sees us dusting off the fly fishing gear in anticipation of opening day. and the thought of tasty, fat spring venison just around the corner enters our thoughts. We also find time for another week of hunting tar late in the year. That's if we can find a good window amongst the fickle west coast spring weather. Of course, the hot summer months are ideal for the odd freedive spearfishing mission. And if we can find time, a few days paddling some white water in the kayaks. And then, autumn calls. You all know what it's like. The willow trees start to turn yellow. The days are noticeably cooler, not to mention shorter. The sun sits lower in the sky. Mushrooms start appearing. air feels crisper and morning dews become quite regular. Autumn has arrived and the deer know it too. This time of year is stag time, raw time. While all the other seasons milestones are looked forward to immensely and thoroughly enjoyed for what each one has to offer, the roar always seems to have just that little bit of extra excitement and anticipation attached to it.
Yo, yo. Good morning, everyone. Sparrow's fart on day two now. We got in here late yesterday afternoon, and by the time we set up camp by the truck, at the end of the track, I only had time for about, oh, I don't know, an hour and a half's evening hunt. Just a wee background story on fellow deer and Aaron. <laughs> They're his nemesis animal. He's had untold stalks on fellow deer and numerous shots and he's missed every single one of them. And he said on the way in here yesterday when we were driving in that if he got a fellow this trip he was gonna he was gonna do a dance and a jig. That should be good, looking forward to that. <laughs> we'll catch you later. was pretty exciting we just walking up the spur to find Aaron's buck that he hit last night and came across a um, quite a nice eight with two hinds and he was roaring his head off it was exciting we're only what 50 50 meters from him and we were following up the spur but we just couldn't get close enough you know every time we moved when they went out of sight they'd get another 50 meters ahead um, but shit <laughs> he's exciting when it's all happening that close. Old story, the old wind hit the back of the neck and gone. So we're just gonna have a bit of a break and commence the search for Aaron's buck. Did the old blood have to do his thing? Yeah. <laughs> what just happened Aaron? Looks like I have to dance a jig. You do. <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> Found him eh? Only um Probably as, as the crow flies, probably only stone dead 60 metres from where I hit him last night. There we We fell over back there. Come on, back. Didn't bleed out much. No. Perfect shot though. Yeah, got him right, but hard case. I was saying to Matt last night, buddy, um, when I came up on the wee, on the ridge top, um, there was a few fellows scattered around, and I was quite keen, obviously, just to get a fellow. But then I heard a bit of croaking and some antlers. So there's obviously another buck there too, and um, it's pretty early. I mean, it's only March the 26th yesterday, and um, yeah, they were croaking. So young animals, but yeah, bloody rat, good stuff. Hey, mate. Had a bit of bad luck with the fellow, haven't you? Yeah, I have, mate. I have ended the ended the kudu with a buck too, so I'm wrapped. Rightio, let's see it. Oh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> jig, 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 jig. Happy with that? Oh, I'm stoked, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely little buck, he'll be nice. Should be good eating too. He's fat. Mm. Tree rut. Yep, no, he'll be good. Awesome.
Howdy ho. How met? Do I ever see me? Yeah. Right. I can't find Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Just off on our evening hunt. Wind's wind's going all wrong for us, but um we have to do a big detour to get the wind right for where we want to go, so here we go. So we've come up the creek and we've spied four hinds. Guessing there's a stag with them, so the stalk's on. Wind's done the old switcheroo and it's actually coming down the creek now, which is uh, which is good for us. So I guess they're about 250 away at the moment. So what happened Matt? The wind <laughs> us up. <laughs> your big feet? Did your big feet have anything to do with it? Nah, I'm quiet as a mouse. Nah, bloody wind. Yeah, you know, it was like when it was quite gusty but um, as expected it sort of swirled and back eddies and we've had a couple, well, we've had one good chance cut up the creek on those deer but um, they spooked pretty soon. So, Frustrating. Yeah. So we decided what to do next, we haven't got a long light left, so we roared at the other boy across the river and he's, um, he didn't like the sound of that, did he? He ran away very quickly. <laughs> yeah, so maybe <laughs> we'll make a plan and then we'll see where we go from there. How'd you go, Matt? Oh, <laughs> at least we had the wind right this time. Yeah. Yep. But I uh, only spooked one along this ridge here. Beautiful yep. ridge. It's got manuka either side and um, grassy yep. little corridors along it. I've seen a lot of deer along here in the past, but um, not this morning. The wind's giving us a bit of jet this trip, isn't it? Yeah. Good this morning, though. Yeah. yeah. So what's the plan from here, mate? Sit down and have a bite to eat. <laughs> yeah, we've got time to kill now, haven't we? Yeah. What's it like being a dedicated cameraman, Aaron? It's quite good, actually. <laughs> That's Aaron's good. Very nicely offered to leave his bow back at camp and be my cameraman. Yep. Since he shot that fellow buck on day yep. one. Yep. But Don't worry. Update. Um, we had yesterday what was probably our best day's um, hunt in the raw ever. We, um, oh, I'll try and cut a long story short, but we walked up the spur early in the morning. Fast forward to mid afternoon into a back gully we call Stag Gully because it's always got three or four or five stags in it. Mm. And man, they, there was about five, I think, in there. In the end, yeah, they were coming from everywhere. It was great. Yeah. It was, yeah, like you say, it was probably one of the best, most exciting. Yeah. Just for sheer numbers and... Action. 
we saw stags fighting and uh, having actually, actually scrapping, which you don't see too often. Yeah, it was full contact, wasn't it? Mm, yeah. Um, there was a lot of parallel walking and just chasing each other around, trying to peel off hinds. And There's one stag in particular we were chasing, though, wasn't he? He's a yeah. big, big nine. He's got three on one top. No bay tines, unfortunately, but um, he's really, really long. long. He was busy gathering up hinds from all over the place, wasn't he? And we yeah. ended up sort of chasing him back because of forwards and we didn't get busted. We actually, we, surprisingly, we did quite well. But um, yeah. it got quite exciting in the end, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I'll try and, try and, we're trying to keep this short. Um, yeah. Late in the day, the the big long nine, which we nicknamed David Longy, <laughs> <laughs> um, he was trying to manage his hinds on this face down the bottom and... Uh, a very good 10 came in I think they parallel walked and then they, yep. they come to blows yep. Yep. and the David Longy ousted the 10 mm. and he came round underneath me when I got the chance I raced forward up to a manuka and he was still at about 35 downhill and I thought right as soon as you turn away and walk around the gully I'll race ahead to the next bush and try and gain some ground but he actually saw my movement he turned around and then started walking straight up towards me, rolling mm. his flipping head off. Uh, so I ducked him behind this manuka and he came up to about 12 metres and kind of peering around the side of this bush. And anyway, I got one into him, a frontal shot. It looked like good penetration and we found the arrow later on and half the arrow was covered mm. in blood. Yeah, so um, deep. Yeah. anyway, um, we blood trailed him for about an hour before dark. Went 350 metres back in here this morning and we've been blood training all morning and it's one o'clock now <laughs> and just going on specs. I think the arrow's gone in maybe just left of centre and instead of penetrating through the brisket and into the rib cage, into the chest cavity, I think it may have hit the ribs and slid down between the shoulder blade and the ribs because although it's dark red blood there's not a lot of it mm. just the lack of blood and he's gone as the crow flies about 650 meters so far and if you include the gullies and ridges it's probably more like a thousand meters mm. we're still on the trail but uh I'm, i have an no idea it slipped down between in that nothing area between and maybe ribs, maybe ribs hit in a, the shoulder blade, eh? yeah, yeah hit a vein or something mm. but anyway we'll keep looking yep. as long as we can Ah, oh, boy, talk about emotional roller coaster. The joys of bow hunting. Uh, it's late in the day now, we tracked that stag for another couple of hundred metres until we just lost the trail. He was, the last blood we had was on an open ridge and he um, obviously went into the scrub somewhere but we just couldn't find where. And on top of that it started raining too. Man. She's hard on hard on the old emotions, bow hunting. You hit a, you put in a good stalk, you put in what you think's a good shot, and you're just riding a massive high. And then the epic blood trail ensues, and no result at the end of it. Just a great big emotional dump. But anyway, that's life, I guess.